It's snowing again. It's the middle of March, and I am tired of shoveling and plowing and dealing with the snow. So, because this is Electric Ranch, we're gonna automate things. Yarbo sent me a snowblower that is autonomous, a snowblower robot. This is modular, so it actually can do a number of things, but they sent me the snowblower module, and then once the snow melts, we'll try out their lawnmower module as well. So I can't wait to try this out. It looks super cool. It could do all sorts of really cool stuff. Let's just unpack it. We've got some helpers today. So that's the battery. We're gonna need that. This is the smart assist module. I believe this is the wireless charger. Put that over there. So this is the actual robot. Ciao, dude, move. Ciao, dude. Well, you're really gonna get stuck if you go back there. Come on. Go this way. All right, okay. Well, let's, let's do the full reveal here. This looks pretty sexy. Ambrose, you want this? You want this? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Do you want one of your own, Althea? Come here. Come here. <laughs> You're gonna steal them all? Okay. Okay, this is the data center, which is, I believe is all the, it's essentially like a, a Wi-Fi hotspot slash radio hotspot, slash I think it is a GPS RTK positioning station. They give you what looks like an Xbox controller for driving this thing, which feels really solid. Okay, so this is the battery, which they ship separately because of shipping regulations. Okay, and that plugs in there. Sweet. Okay, and now should be able to put the cover back on. Here, a letter from the founder. <laughs> User manual. Okay, so these go together. Let's see. Let's make sure I'm not skipping anything. Whoa. This is pretty cool. Okay, so this is the smart assist module, which I think is all like the cameras and stuff. So there's definitely cameras here. Okay, and attach it to the armor core. Click this on to these fitted metal fittings here. There we go. Okay, remove the red caps off the RTK antenna mounts. So RTK stands for real-time kinematics, and it's a way of getting a much more accurate GPS signal. So you have a base station of known position and it figures out the difference between its current known position and the current position it's getting from the GPS satellites and calculates an offset. And then it transmits that to the robot and the robot applies that offset. And it can get you accuracy down to like a centimeter. Um, so it's, a per it's perfect for this type of application where you really wanna know with pretty good accuracy what the location of the robot is. You know, a centimeter is pretty good. So far, I'm pretty impressed with the build quality and fit and finish of this. Like, it's nice. Okay. Keep the black ring for waterproofing. Locate the halo antenna. I have not heard of halo. I don't know what that is. I'm guessing it's some form of like Wi-Fi type deal, but I'm not familiar. Pull this cover off. And turn on the power button. Hey. Ta da! That's pretty cool. We're skipping ahead here, but I think I turned that on. Do you need to drive? No? Okay. Can I drive? Ready to work. I 
I didn't know it would talk. <laughs> Apparently it does. You can tow stuff? That's exciting. Oh, you can have it patrol for intruders? You can have it follow you? This is pretty cool. What's going on here? Oh, there we go. I got it to move. Oh, whoa, easy there. Okay, that's pretty sweet. All right, welcome to Yarbo. We recommend using the physical controller for the initial experience. To be familiar with controlling the Yarbo. Okay, add your Yarbo. My Yarbo module, let's smart, start with just Smart Assist. Now, assembled and powered on, yes. And there it is. Weak GPS signal. <laughs> the voice they chose for it is... It's good. It's better than a lot of things. It's just funny. So the data center can either be installed on a wall of the house or a roof. I do want to do that. However, it's been starting to snow and I don't want to do that when it's wet and scary and icy and stuff. So we'll wait on that. Uh, we can do it on the ground, but it said make sure there's at least 120 degrees of unobstructed view. So we'll stick it somewhere out there. Should be okay. Extension pole, okay. And we're gonna run the ethernet cable through that. So the data center is what provides internet connectivity and uh, exact positioning for the robot. And both of those are pretty necessary if you wanna have it be autonomous. But that's pretty rad itself. So if you're not familiar with PoE, it's Ethernet, but it's got some decent amount of voltage, 60 volts running across it. I might be way wrong on that. This is the power injector. So we'll plug this into my regular switch. We'll plug this into the Ethernet cable going to the data center. And then this gets plugged into the wall and it injects power onto the line. And that way we don't have to run a separate power cable to the data center. I have my very messy network set up here. One open spot on a switch. So this goes into LAN. You don't want to screw these up and run PoE into something that's not expecting it. Let's go put the data center outside. I think that's pretty good. I think it needs the sky view mostly for the GPS so that it can pick up as many GPS satellites as possible to provide that good offset for the RTK. It's okay, girl. Okay, I think we're done with the data center upgrades and I think I'm connected to it. There we go. Hey, hey! Holy smokes, look at this. Jeez. That is serious. Now, this goes in here. And then we forcibly insert. Yep, I got it. Uh, place the co the cover back on. Ready to work. Shush. Don't you dare. That's good. Locate the four shafts and holes, which are the ones down there. That's so cool. Oh, look at the top articulate. Yes. I'm coming for you, Billy. I'm pretty excited. I think the next step is throw it on the charger. Put this on the charger. And uh, in the morning, we'll swap on the treads. We should have a couple inches of snow, according to the forecast. And uh, we'll give this a proper trial. It's the next morning. This thing is all charged up. This thing is all charged up. The last thing we need to do before we take it out, we've got some fresh snow. I want to go try it out, but we got to put on the studded treads for snow, so. Oh, 
supposed to flip it on its side. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, look how greased up it is. Emergency stop. Okay. Yep. Look how greased up that is. Oh, there is a forward and a backwards on this. And then now is our time to swap in our metal side plates. We gotta get this thing on, and we'll go give it a shot. Ooh, is it gonna fit? Don't you have to christen it, like on its first voyage, like break a champagne <laughs> bottle? I think smash it into a door is more appropriate for a robot. All right. What do you think about it, Ambrose? Try to create a map. Okay, I think we're good. Poor. Oh, excellent. Here we go. Here it is. Okay. GPS data is now being processed, which may take about a minute. We don't have the docking station set up yet. Oh, we need to install it before mapping. Okay, I guess let's go do that. We'll just put it here temporarily to see. Uh, how it works and then we can figure out how permits work. To me, the fact they have little details like this really shows they're thinking about the, the user experience, either because they've really done a lot of design work or probably because they've just gotten a lot of feedback from users one way or another, either through previous versions or they have done a lot of user studies. But it, regardless of how they're figuring it out, it's a really good sign. There we go. All right, that's plugged in. Let's see if we can get this thing mapping. So I took a break for a phone call and some lunch and Garrett was getting some footage of the robot and now it just kind of seems dead. Like I can get it to light up, but I can't get it to like connect to the app or anything. If I hold the power button, it goes through a sequence of lights and like lights up for a little bit and then it just shuts off again. I don't know what's going on. Okay. I don't know what's going on. It's still on. Let's go up by the house, I guess. Oh, it's online now. Okay, so it's, yeah, it seems like it's just the Wi-Fi on my phone. Which we gotta get better Wi-Fi coverage out here. Okay, continue. Hey, hey, there we go. So one thing I don't understand, these augers here, I'm gonna ease up. Emergency stop. These augers here, are just free spinning on the axle. It looks to me, I was looking at it. Emergency stop. There are these holes here that line up with holes on the axle. Like there should be a bolt or something that goes through it, but there's nothing there. Emergency stop. I think those need a bolt in them, but I don't really want to modify it without talking to Yarbo, so. For product inquiries, please press one. To adjust orders or request a refund, press 2. For technical support, press 3. How can I help you today? Yeah, hi. I just received my snowblower, and um, I'm noticing, after using it for a little bit, that the uh, 
augers on the front are having a hard time turning. And I'm wondering if maybe we there's missing pins that attach to the axle uh, or something like that. No way, Nick. It's not really moving very well. It's getting clogged very, very easily. Uh, I I don't know where they should be. On the augers, hang on, let me get these. Okay. On the augers, I see stop. two holes that looks like it might have might have once had shear pins in it. There's supposed to be four pins on yeah. the right side, two of them, and on the left side, two of them. Yeah, there are no pins. Any one of them are missing or like damaged. Right, uh, so you'll be able to find them. Uh, we do provide extra shear pins in okay. the accessory box. Okay. You'll be able to find them in the accessory box. Yeah. Okay, and I just put in new pins. Emergency stop. Is there anything else? No, I think that's yeah, it. Yeah, sure. If you'll be facing any issue, what you could do is just... Uh, Right, you can write us the email as well if you'll be the issue with uh, the bins or okay. anything else in it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Okay. Have Thanks. a good day. Have a good evening. Have a good evening. Have a good evening. Yeah, bye. bye. Easy enough. I'm willing to bet that that's because we've been hitting a lot of rocks and sticks and stuff, so. Emergency stop. Uh, let's drive this back up to the shop and we'll replace the, the pins. Uh, I think right now it's trying to clear any snow off of its charging platform, and it does that twice, I think. I think that's what's going on. Yes? Animal detected. I think it said animal detected. That's good. Ambrose, come here. Leave the robot alone, please. Good boy. Cool! Alright. Um, let's go figure out shear pins. And warm up our hands, because I'm frozen. Oh, this is going well now. back with more content about this as we get into spring here and start getting some grass. Use the link down below, which is an affiliate link, to let them know I sent you. I'll see you again soon.